Hi everyone, it's Simon from HomeSite, and today we're going to be doing the practical installation of a Shelly 1L with no neutral. Let's go! So first of all, a bit of admin. This video is not sponsored by Shelly, although Shelly, if you'd like to, then please get in touch because I love your products. This is one purely because I love the Shelly products and I think that they're really useful. Now, some of you may know already that I've done one of the Shelly 1L how to wire without a neutral and Shelly 1L how to wire a two-way switch, but my Black Friday haul has arrived along with this along with some other bits. So I'm now gonna do a practical installation. So this. I've already got a bunch of these installed in my house, but actually this one is the first one where I've actually recorded. And you can see the size of these things and they're, if you haven't come across them before, they're absolutely great. They're, they're Wi-Fi, so no Zigbee on this occasion, and they are purely Wi-Fi, but they work without a neutral and without fault so far on my Wi-Fi network. So today we're gonna go through a practical installation how to install it within a wall, how to install it using the existing wiring, how to do a conversion from a single one-way one switch into a one-way switch, the same one-way switch with the Shelly 1L. So I hope you really enjoy this video. I hope you give it a like. I hope you subscribe to my channel and check me out on Instagram as well. But first of all, a word of caution. Please be careful. This video is not designed to teach you how to work with electrics in a safe manner. There's obviously going to be local guidelines, local legislation, which means that you have to that you have to comply to. So if you're not sure, please get an electrician involved. So you can see here I've got a standard UK light switch and I've already removed the cabling. Now you can see when I put my Shelly 1L into the back box, the 25mm back box, it doesn't leave a lot of space to attach the light switch. And with the electronics in the, or the switch part, switch mechanism in the light switch, there isn't space to push that in as well. So I need to find an alternative. Now I have plasterboard walls here, um, throughout on the internal walls anyway, so I can remove this back box and hopefully find enough space behind the plasterboard to put my Shelly 1L. Now it's not like I'm cramming into something like where there's lots of insulation, so heat dissipation shouldn't be a problem. There should be plenty of airflow within that wall to make sure that the, uh, the Shelly 1L does not overheat. So if I now try and pass the Shelly 1L up or down behind, you can see where there's a bit of a gap there. It doesn't matter which one either really because you can see I've got enough wire now there's a bit of resistance there but with that little bit of plasterboard sort of folded back over you can see that it fits up behind and now to make my terminals so you can see here that there's some exposed copper so we don't want that we want to make sure there's just enough conductor exposed so that we can push the connector in tighten it up firmly and not show any exposed copper at all so that looks a lot better. So if I try and connect that now, you can see that fits in nicely. However, I'm not totally happy with that because there's a bit of damaged um, insulator there at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to strip a bit more off, slightly off screen with my insulation with my uh, wire strippers here. So I've just taken a bit more insulation away. I'm just going to trim that back down a little. And now when I make that connection, hopefully we should not see any exposed copper at all. Now you can see I've got the brown wire, which in the UK we use as our live, and the blue, which is also a live, because you can see it's blue with that little bit of brown sheath or that bit of wire sh heat shrink. So I've put that over there to ensure that it is seen as a, as a live wire and should never be considered as a neutral, and all of the neutral connections are made up into the ceiling rows at the light bulb itself. So that's them nice and tight. Make sure you do get those nice and tight. You can see my other cable there is my earth wire, which obviously there's no connection for. So I've made two short bits of wire, one with a long exposed piece of conductor and one with a short. Now the short is gonna go into the Shelly end and the long is gonna eventually go into my switch in a second. So I'm gonna tighten those up. Now this is going into SW1 and into the SX terminals. Now, obviously there's two Shelly, there's two inputs to the Shelly 1L. Now you could use a second one if you wanted, if you had some desk lamps or something like that, you can have them detached from the bulb, which is a great feature, I think. So if I did ever want to change this into a, a double socket or double light switch, and I could then have the, uh, the, the bedside lights or anything like that. 
Now here's a WAGO, which I'm just a little connector block, which I'm going to use on the earth just to extend the wiring down so I can properly earth the back box in a moment when I reinstall it. So I'm just going to make that connection off there. And I've got a spare bit of um, earth cable here, just one mil with the sheath on as well. And so I'm just going to push into the other side of the WAGO and make that connection. Obviously you could use all sorts of different terminal blocks. <clears throat> the screw ones, the scotch blocks are pretty good, um, but I do like these WAGO ones. So now I'm going to pass all of this cabling and the Shelly 1L up into the, into the wall cavity. And obviously these two wires are going to come back into the back box or these three wires with the earth as well. Now I'm not worried about any heat dissipation in here because there's plenty of airflow within the wall cavity. But if you were trying to pass this in where there's lots of air insulation or something like that, I would be a bit more concerned. I would certainly be monitoring the, uh, the temperature rather closely. So you can see now I've got only those three wires, my two switch wires and my earth wire coming through the back box. So I'm just going to connect the back box back into the same holes. Now make my connections with my switch. Now I find using a pair of needle nose pliers sometimes makes life a bit easier when you're trying to bend these wires around just because you have that extra purchase, especially on these earth wires where you've got the insulation around as well. So make that nice and tight. Now you can see here with my switch, I'm going to use one and the one way and common. Now this is a two way switch, but I'm only using one way for it. So I'm just going to just check these into here. But actually I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little twist on the end just because I always feel it makes a better connection. You can always guarantee a better, better connection that way. Now in hindsight, I would normally make this a little bit longer. But as you can see, I, I always do test my connections with a quick pull anyway, just to make sure that they, the a proper connection has been made and it's not likely to pull out. So that's the first connection made and give it a quick tug and the second connection made. And now I can put the, the machine screws back in to hold the switch back into place. Great, so that's done. And now I can put the power back on. So you can see my light here. Now, if I try and turn it on, you get this lovely flashing effect, which is obviously not what we want. So up at the ceiling rows now, we are going to need to put in a bypass. Now this goes on the permanent live side, not the switched side. So one side is going to go onto the neutral and one side is going to go onto the permanent live. So here's the bypass. So you can see I've loosened off one of the connections on the neutral side. I'm putting that in with the same neutral wire. Just giving that a tug again with some needle nose pliers to make sure it's a good fit. Now I'm loosening off the permanent live side. Well, I'm going to make that connection as well. Again, sliding it in with an existing conductor. Again, make sure that's nice and tight. Now you can see I've made a bit of a mistake here because I'm wanting the bypass to go this side of the wire, not in front of it where there's little space. So my hope is that the ceiling rows will screw back on, or the cover will screw back on with the bypass in place. And I don't have to hide it into any, in any ceiling or anything like that. Obviously this does rely on your wiring being fairly tight in there not using all of the space. Again, give it all a bit of a tug with a pair of needle nose pliers just to make sure it's not going to pull through. And I've now turned the power back on and you can see we're not getting that horrible flashing effect. The bypass is doing its job. And I can turn it back off again and it does go fully off. So that's good news. So now to try and get this ceiling rose on. So with a bit of a twist, you can see some of it is slightly paint covered anyway from when I was being a bit sloppy when I was painting the ceilings. But you can see that it goes on. So we've got our bypass 
hidden within the rose itself rather than having to try and hide it somewhere else. So now a final demonstration, you can see the effective use of a mirror here as well. So you can see I can turn the light on and off and on again, fantastic. So I'm pretty happy with that. Nice, easy Shelly 1L installation. So if you've made it this far, that's got to be a good sign. Either you've in managed to install your Shelly 1L or you're going to in the future. I wish you the best of luck with that. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means everything to me. If you have any issues or comments, please put them down below and I'll try and come back to you. Please like this video. Please subscribe to my channel and check me out on Instagram to see what else is coming up. Thank you so much.